Moving on uh, and staying uh, in, uh, uh, in fact, the south of India. Now, Amma Canteens in Tamil Nadu, one of the most pivotal schemes launched by late Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J.J. Lalitha as a part of a welfare program is dying a slow death. And it uh, seems those who claim to be heir of Amma's legacy aren't even concerned. The canteen chain, which provides lunch and dinner to the underprivileged at a cost uh, which is heavily subsidized, has now been pushed to civic bodies which are facing financial losses. In fact, it has been five years since the project was launched, but now there are no queues and even the working hours of these canteens have been reduced. The latest uh, developments have uh, raised questions over their sustainability now, but the chief minister of the state has only remained unfazed, pushing the ball into the court of the concerned minister. In the past one year, there's been such a cash crunch that the Amma canteen is absolutely empty now. The quality has gone down according to the people who eat there. And as far as uh, this uh, canteen issue is concerned, yes, the concerned uh, minister would definitely will address those issues. Chennai has many Amma canteens. We are at Mandai Veli right now. And this is one of the Amma canteens here. Not crowded as it used to be years back when it was just initiated. You can see a person or two inside standing and eating there. But all these people have the same thing to say. It is very economical and the food is good and it's decent. We can eat it, we can enjoy three meals over here without having it burden our pockets. And that's why we're coming back. This is what we're talking to people, but then a cash crunch in the state has led to people questioning how are the Amma canteen sustaining? How are the employees working? Is the quality the same as it was five years before? So a person who's been in Chennai would know that these canteens, you would have a long queue at the counter to buy your ticket or your coupon for your food around five years back. But now the working hours have reduced to just an hour or two in the morning, the same for lunch and then for dinner. And you can see that it is just with two people inside and people don't come here anymore. Well, days after the arrest of an Air Force officer over espionage charges, a similar case has now emerged in Jabalpur with a Lieutenant Colonel ranked Indian Army officer now being suspected of falling prey to a honey trap. The officer has been detained by the Army's counterintelligence wing after military intelligence observed huge transactions in his bank account. Reports say the Army man allegedly fell prey to a honey trap and then has now been shifted to Lucknow for questioning. He has reportedly been accused of transferring confidential information to Pakistan's rogue spy agency, ISI. Several documents and a computer hard drive has also been seized. Days, uh, this comes only a few days after Air Force officer was arrested by Delhi police over espionage charges. Uh, Sudhiranjan Sen, my colleague, now joins me on the phone line for more uh, on this story. And uh, uh, Sudhi, if I can uh, you know, ask you uh, about this. This has now become sort of a, uh, you know, a tactic which is highly effective as far as the ISI is concerned, not the first case, not the second case. We have been hearing about it in the last, uh, you know, almost a year or so on a repeated interval. Well, I mean, the number of cases, uh, you know, there has been an increase or we have got to know more number of cases or they have been reported more, whichever way you want to take it. That, you know, that, that of course is there, but then there are measures also that are being taken to, you know, counter these. Repeatedly, uh, officers, soldiers are being told for the threats of social media, how they can uh, be trapped by the enemy. There are social media norms and rules that is there. Uh, and there's, those are very strict guidelines that are issued. But then one odd cases uh, does or do still appear, uh, do happen. And in this case, of course, we are not still yet clear. Is it is it a case of espionage or is it a case of corruption? Uh, that that the army isn't yet giving out. What we know is the lieutenant colonel has now is now being questioned. Uh, the military counter uh, counter intelligence uh, wing of the military uh, is uh, debriefing him. He was posted in Jabalpur, that's uh, in the central command, uh, and and uh, he was in the engineering or uh, engineering mechanical engineering service, the EME EME core as it is called. So that is where it stands. No charges have been pressed against him or the officer concerned. That's the most important thing. Till charges are pressed, uh, it, it's, it would be a bit too premature uh, to say whether this, this is a case of honey trap or this is a case of corruption okay. or whether at all uh, there is anything wrong uh, 
and only a suspicion was being investigated. Thank you. That's right. Sudhir Ranjan Sen just clarifying there that till the time there are uh, formal charges pressed, this is still under investigation, a suspected case either of honey trapping or uh, in fact uh, of uh, corruption. Sudhir, thank you so much for clarifying. Well, after AIMIM leader Asad Dhanavesi in fact uh, accused him of, an, of acting on behalf of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, expelled Muslim law board member Salman Nadwi is battling bribery charges now. Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's close aide Amarnath Mishra, who claims to have conceptualized the Ayodhya dispute solution, says Nadvi allegedly demanded 5,000 crore rupees, 200 acres of land in Ayodhya and a Rajya Sabha seat to end the dispute. Mishra says uh, he could not arrange the money and there are, uh, thereafter, in fact, uh, forwarded the demand to the BJP and the RSS. Mishra says uh, Nadvi sought the bribe during the meeting with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar on February 5th. He also went on to give the exact date and time of this meeting after India Today and told him that uh, Nadvi has said that he didn't know Mishra. Meanwhile, Subramaniam Swami, the BJP Raj Sabha MP, has tweeted and said that charges against Nadvi only prove his point that any Muslim who is conciliatory will be thought as bribed. को सलमान नदवी साहब से हम नदवा कॉलेज में सवेरे 9:45 पे मिलने गए थे तो उन्होंने हमसे कहा था कि आप लोगों की तरफ से जो भी प्रस्ताव हो हिंदुओं की तरफ से वो आप हमें लिख करके दे दीजिए डील की बात तो जब सामने आई जब हमसे 5000 करोड़ रुपया कहा गया आप हमें दिलवा दें 200 एकड़ जमीन दिलवा दें और राज्यसभा की सदस्यता दिला दें अयोध्या का इस्लामीकरण की योजना है सलमान नदवी की और हम अयोध्या का इस्लामीकरण नहीं होने देंगे अमरनाथ मिश्रा को तो मैं जानता भी नहीं हूँ कि ये ये शैतानों की किस नस्ल से हैं, लेकिन जो शख्स ये ये बात कर रहा है अब वो ईश्वर उससे निमटेगा वो दुनिया में भी जानने में जाएगा आखिरत की जानने में जाएगा और ये दुनिया में देख लेगा इसको कैसी सजा मिलती है इसका ईश्वर इसका भगवान किस तरह से इसको सजा देता है इसकी अगर ये जबान से झूठ बोलेगा खुदा इसकी जबान खराब कर देगा Nadvi continues to be on the defensive after the explosive uh, bribery charges on him. Now listen into how AIMM's uh, Asaduddin Owesi responded to Nadvi's call to give up Babri Masjid for Ram Temple. BJP Chief Amit Shah will sound the poll bugle for the 2019 Lok Sabha elections during a motorcycle rally in Haryana. BJP leaders claim over 1 lakh bikers will participate in Amit Shah's rally in Jeem. A day before, uh, Haryana Chief Minister Manohlal Khattar arrived in Jeem over on a motorcycle to take stock of the arrangements uh, for this mega rally. But Qatar's bike ride, uh, in fact, was marred in a controversy as his motorbike did not even have a number plate. Now, tight security arrangements have been made in view of this rally in Haryana, and the government is making sure that it is a grand success. Many police and paramilitary forces have been made in Haryana. Total, 19 paramilitary companies have come to us. In addition, the other units of Haryana police have come to us. And the police force has also been trained. I understand that the law and the law have been made in the law. If there is any person who has tried to break the law and the law, then the law will be able to break the law. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Pune on Thursday to discuss the situation. Seven satellite television channel of Doordarshan for the northeastern region. This will be Doordarshan's second channel for the region. DD Arun Prabha will showcase programs on the diverse culture of the northeastern states. During his uh, day long visit, with the, the Prime Minister is also scheduled to inaugurate the state civil secretariat in Itanagar. He will also address a rally in, uh, at Indra Park in Itanagar as well. In fact, uh, from Arunachal, uh, Modi will then head to Tripura, where he will hold two rallies in Shanti Bazaar and uh, at 2 p.m. and in Nagartula at 4.
17 people have been killed and at least 14 injured after a 19-year-old former student opened fire at a school in Florida. In fact, the suspect was identified as 18-year-old Nicholas Cruz, who had been expelled from the high school in Parkland for disciplinary reasons. In fact, uh, he quietly surrendered after the Florida police reached the spot. The gunman reportedly had a rifle and a handgun when he entered the school premises on Wednesday before opening fire inside the school. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, has offered condolences to the kin of the deceased and those injured as well. And he has said the governor was trying to maintain law and order. Had to like wait, and they kept pushing us further and further and further. And we kept hearing now there's shooters, and we were we tried for fireworks or shooters. It just kept going back and forth, and then it started going on the news, and we found out what was really going on. We literally just came from there, um, picking up some kids along the way because a lot of the kids are really distraught, as you can imagine. Um, so it's just terrifying, terrifying for the parents, terrifying for the kids. Very emotional. We want to uh, extend our condolences and sympathy for all those people, family members involved in the tragedy today. Through a Broward Health system, we received 17 patients. At Broward Health North, we received eight patients and one suspect. <clears throat> the suspect was treated and released in police custody. Of our eight patients, we had two mortalities, three in critical condition, and three are stable. We receive no warning, no indication, but again, there's going to be a thorough investigation. Uh, typically, you see in these situations that there potentially could have been signs out there. I would be speculating at this point if there were, uh, but we don't have, we didn't have any warnings. There weren't any phone calls or threats that we know of that were made. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel, We Know You Would Love To.